What's up guys? Today we're going to be checking out the 3D kit from Expand. This is for the new Sony 4K projectors, uh, specifically the XW7000. Of course, this year Sony decided to eliminate the RF emitter from their projectors, so you will need this particular kit to get 3D working. First off, you will need this cable. The model number for this is the CAB010135. This will go from the emitter to the back of the uh, projector. And let's take a look inside this little kit. This is the warranty information. And as far as the model number, this is the Expand RF Pro Emitter System. AE125RF is the model number. User guide and warranty info. Put that off to the side. Inside the packaging, we get another, looks like another sync cable here. This looks like maybe it goes to a different kind of projector because this model here would replace that one. This is the emitter itself. Up front, it just has the regular Expand Vision logo. Then on the back, we get a power LED light, a power inlet. Looks like a little reverse switch. And then I think this is where that sync cable goes in. So we'll just do a little test fit. So yeah, so this little BNC connector would slide right in there, lock in. Then the opposite side, on the back of the Sony projector, there is a little 3.5 jack on the back of the projector, which this would lock into or snap into. So that is the emitter box. And then there is the power adapter for it right there. And then we get different adapter ends for different countries. As far as the 3D glasses, these are Expand Vision. The model number is X105RFX1 right there. So they sent over two of these for me to check out. So we'll be checking out hopefully maybe Avatar. I'll throw an Avatar just so I can see what that looks like in comparison to what we had seen yesterday or the other day since Avatar just got re-released into the theaters. We, me and the wife, Nancy, went to go check out Avatar. IMAX 3D, it wasn't in 4K high frame rate or HDR, or nothing like that. I think it was just regular standard, uh, just 2K. I mean, it might've been 4K, but it really didn't look that 4K. It looked very similar to what it looks like on the standard Blu-ray. But I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna set this up in the theater, then I'll come back, give you some thoughts and impressions on how this thing performs and whether or not you should go see Avatar 3D yourself. All right, to get the emitter connected up to the Sony, you're gonna have to take the included cable, plug the end of it into the little BNC connector into the back of the emitter, and then take the 3.5 mil jack and plug it into the 3D sync input on the side of the Sony projector. Once everything's powered up, you'll have the little green power light and also the yellow sync light over here at the end. And if you start watching the movie and you're noticing that the left and right eyes are swapped, there is a reverse button right in the back of the emitter. So once you get all that hooked up, you're gonna have to take your glasses and if they're not already charged, right on the bottom, you'll see that there is a little micro USB connector port, which is for the charging cable that comes inside the box. This came out before USB-C was a thing, so you're gonna be stuck with micro USB. Now right on the inside of the arm, right next to the micro USB, you'll see that there is a power button located right there, right below the micro USB input. Now, once you start your movie, you're gonna have to get the glasses synced up to the emitter. What you're gonna have to do is take the little power button, which on the opposite side, you'll notice there's a little LED button located right there on the inside of the same power button arm. You're gonna take the power button, press it down once till the red light blinks. Let go of it. Once it goes off, Hold it down for a couple seconds till it blinks three times. Now the glasses should be synced to the emitter. It's nice to meet you, sir. This is the best 3D quality that I've seen in my theater so far. Definitely better than the two JVC projectors that I have and better than the three Sony projectors that I've had in here as well. Now, since this projector is so bright, if you really wanna max out the, the lumens on whatever 3D film you're watching, you just crank up the laser light on this thing. And it's like, it's almost like not even wearing glasses. Like it's that bright. And that was one of the things that always kind of hindered not only the JVC projectors, but, but also the Sony projectors as well, 
was because since these are active glasses and they look like sunglasses, there's always going to be a slightly dark tint to whatever you're watching. And with these new generation laser projectors, and even with the JVC and NZ7 that I had, because these new laser projectors are so bright that it definitely helps to mitigate the tint in these glasses. And if I'm comparing this projector to the NZ7, this is definitely brighter for sure. And I think in the combination with how good this lens is on the 7000 ES, like this image looks crisper, even a little bit sharper than what I saw on the re-release in IMAX in 4K. And as far as like crosstalk, I mean, there's like zero crosstalk in this. There's a scene right here I'm looking at, um, Jake looking at that hologram, hologram map of the tree in uh, Pandora, and it looks like it just like goes on like several feet into the screen. And there's this part here where I've got a couple of people walking in front of the camera, and you can definitely see like several, several layers, not only in front of you in the foreground, but several layers reaching into the screen with zero crosstalk. And the colors look amazing as well. The black levels, because th these glasses are tinted, it helps to enhance the black levels. So definitely aids in the depth and, and separation in this 3D image. And also the colors look just as good. Like I said, the colors look just as good as what I saw at the IMAX presentation. Uh, I, I would say that the, um, you know, the IMAX presentation, I think because of their implementation of HDR, some of the blues are a little bit deeper. Some of the greens are a little bit deeper as well, but you know, I, obviously I can go in and adjust the saturation in this projector, but uh, for what it is right now, I mean, this looks very, very similar, if not, you know, like I said, if not better than what I saw at the IMAX theater. The one thing that is missing that I don't know why it's missing is that if you do want to get that soap opera effect or faux high frame rate effect, the soap opera effect, you can't turn any motion interpolation on this projector anymore. I'm pretty sure that you could do that in the previous generation Sony projectors, but with this one, there's no true motion, so you can't turn motion smoothing on low or high or medium or anything like that. So if you wanted to get that look, you can't do that with 3D content. I mean, if you can, I'm definitely missing it in the menus, but I, I looked and it's just not there. But I am really liking the extra lumens on the laser projectors this year. I mean, this really makes 3D content pop. Like I said, it's almost not like even wearing 3D glasses because you can ramp up the laser light so bright. So it's like colors are bright. I mean, you're getting nice specular highlights. This is almost like having 4K 3D because these laser, because these laser projectors are so bright nowadays. What are you called? Judge Sully. Now for all you Avatar fans out there, I did watch this in IMAX a couple of days ago. And if I am to compare this with what I'm seeing right now on the Sony projector, I think the Sony projector actually beats out what I saw in 4K at the IMAX 3D theater. The one detrimental thing that I noticed in not only IMAX 3D, but also the 4K HDR version was, I'm pretty sure there's a light application of DNR in this new re-release. Whereas if I'm comparing it to what I'm seeing right here, I'm seeing better detail in faces, on some of the CG elements here, these CG creatures, they just look more detailed. I'm not saying that it looks Terminator 2 levels of DNR because some scenes do look a little bit better than what I'm seeing right now in this, in this standard 3D Blu-ray. But then there are some other scenes where just the detail was just scrubbed off in faces and some of the CG looked a bit softer, whereas this one stays consistently sharp and detailed all the way through. Even on the standard 2D 4K presentation, I think this, I think this 3D Blu-ray looked very similar to what I was seeing on just the regular 2D version. The colors look a little bit better from what I recall from a couple days ago on the HDR version. Like the greens were a little bit more saturated and the blues had a little bit more punch as well. But you know, if I wanted to like up the contrast or if I wanted to up the saturation levels on the projector, I could probably get it to look very similar to what I saw for the re-release. I don't think this new 4K transfer, either 2K or 3D, really, um, really is that big of a departure than than what I'm seeing right now. As far as like 3D quality, this looks this looks equally as good as what I'm seeing in IMAX. I mean, I don't see any crosstalk here. I'd say that the IMAX version is uh, definitely a little bit brighter, just a touch brighter, but still, it's kind of negligible between the two. I mean, since these are active 3D glasses, if you're really sensitive to seeing the flicker in the 3D glasses. 
that might bother you a little bit, but I can barely see it. And I think that this, this 3D presentation looks very similar, if not, if not better than what I saw on IMAX. But I am curious to see what they're gonna do once this comes out in 4K Blu-ray. Is there gonna be a heavy layer of DNR? Is there gonna be a lot of detail scrubbed away? Because remember, this movie wasn't shot in 4K. I think it was shot in something like Full HD, 1080p. Although it was natively shot in 3D, so it's, always, it's got that going for it. I'd still say that this, that this film holds up very well to today's 3D standards. I think like the creature design on this still looks as good as what we saw in Thanos. So it's got definitely a real, real feel to it. It doesn't feel like it's too cartoony. Like it feels like you're in a, a believable world. So, I mean, it holds up really well to today's standards. And I'd say it looks better than a lot of the stuff that we see today from like Marvel movies. So this definitely holds up for sure. And it's still one of the best 3D transfers either at the theater or on 3D Blu-ray. I mean, if I was gonna give it a, a grade, I would give it like a 9.8 as far as 3D quality. There's some scenes where I think that there should be a bit more depth and separation, like that scene with the floating rocks or the floating land masses. I, I, for whatever reason, not only in the theater, but here, you know, they didn't touch it up in theater. I thought there'd be a little bit more layers in that particular scene. So there's like some scenes thrown in here and there. But other than that, it's still like cream of the crop for 3D transfers and uh, definitely a must own if you have a 3D display. But anyways, guys, that's my thoughts on not only Avatar 3D at the IMAX theater and also on 3D Blu-ray, but my thoughts on this Expand 3D kit for the Sony 7000 ES projectors. Anyways, guys, what are your thoughts on the 3D quality on this new Sony 7000 ES projector? And what are your thoughts on this brand new Avatar re-release in 4K HDR 3D? Leave your comments down below and let me know. But thanks for watching. Be sure to like this video if you found it useful and subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you again in the next video.